What's up, nerds? My name is Steve from Flipping the Nerd, and this is my top 10 favorite horror video games. Uh, I love video games, and I especially love horror video games. So this is a list that I have been excited to do since I first started making lists, and uh, I'm super happy that I'm finally getting to talk about it. Uh, just so you know, before I start, this is my favorite horror games, not the scariest horror games, which is also a list I'm going to do at some point, but rather really just my favorite games that are horror based. So that's the first rule. And the second rule, only one per franchise, because if I didn't do that, some games would probably appear multiple times. And it makes for a little bit of a boring list as I'm like, uh, Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 3, Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil 5, you know, like, it's just, like, I just re really like some series, so it would be t completely unfair, and it'd probably be, like, three or four games that would dominate the entire list. So, one per franchise, and my favorites, not the scariest. And one more small little note, just putting it out there, if I seem a little off, once again, I'm doing a video in a condition that I probably shouldn't. I got knocked out this morning, uh, not someone that knocked me out, well, yes, someone did knock me out, but I didn't get punched or anything. Uh, someone closed a, um, a trunk, like from a van, onto my head. I was out for a few seconds there, so I'm a little, like, wishy-washy, but I will power through and do these videos anyway, because that's the kind of guy I am. So let's get into it and start with some honorable mentions. The very first one is Fear, which is a game I played on the Xbox 360, it's kind of a uh, first-person ghosty type film, like ghost demon type film. It's something that would probably appear somewhere on my scariest list. It is very freaky. You use a camera and stuff sometimes to take pictures and solve riddles, and there's all these crazy things that happen. It's got a bit of a... Layers of Fear has a similar taste, which isn't on my list. Uh, I did like it. I just didn't think it was particularly like one of my favorites. Uh, but it will probably also appear on my scariest list. But Fear is something I would recommend for people to at least try out, just uh, not quite a top 10 game. Then we have The Condemned. The Condemned isn't the most horror game. A lot of the game takes place with kind of uh, people that are just kind of junkies that you fight. So I, I'm kind of on the fence on whether or not it is a horror game. And the, but the reason I put in the honorable mentions is it has the scariest level I've ever played, ever, uh, which is a mall uh, level that they have in the game where the mall was abandoned during Christmas and there's these things that happen with mannequins, super freaky, awesome scene. And in fact, uh, one time IGN, you know, the famous video game site, they're like the biggest one, asked the question, what was the scariest video game scene ever? And I tweeted them this scene and they put me at the top of their article because they thought it was a great answer because it is absolutely a scary scene. So I did want to give it a shout out, but not one of my favorites. Then we have the seventh guest, one that I'm not sure many of you have played. If you have, that's awesome. It is a puzzle game that takes place in a haunted uh, kind of mansion. Very, very cool game. I played it like on my old PC when I was a kid. Uh, they were very tough because I was young and trying to solve these pretty tough puzzles, but uh, it's kind of ghosty, which I love. Ghosts are one of my favorite things in the horror genre, and uh, it's just a very cool game, and I had to give it a shout out. Then we go to the NES and play Monster Party. Monster Party is a hell of a tough game. Like, it was tough when I was a kid. It's still tough. I played it like a year ago, and... This game does not mess around, but it had a very cool kind of Halloween vibe, and I really dug it. You play a kid with a bat, and you bat these, like, completely crazy creatures, and the bosses in this game are just batshit. Like, uh, they're just all over the place, but I love it, and I had to give it at least a shout-out. And finally, it's Friday the 13th, which is a game I played on my Xbox One. Um, the game is really cool. I love the concept. But unless you're playing with friends, I don't think it's that great of a game. And I don't have a ton of friends who play it. So if you play it, let me know. That would, I'd love to play it. But uh, still, I love the concept, love the graphics. And uh, it is something that deserved at least a shout out, but not one of my favorites. So that's it for the honorable mentions. 
let's get into the top 10. Number 10. The Evil Within. Uh, the Evil Within is a more recent game. It's something I've been playing on my Xbox One. Uh, there's one and two that are out right now. Uh, it's got a kind of Resident Evil vibe to it, uh, like a lot. I think the maker of Evil Within, if I remember, did Resident Evil 4, which you may or may not see on this list later. Um, so it is a fantastic game. It's a little uh, sluggish at times. Some of the stuff is a little out there, more so than Resident Evil. But it's, an, it's a fun experience, and if you're into horror games, this generation of consoles, uh, I would highly recommend it, as it is on both PS4 and Xbox One. Um, it's, a, it's just a cool game. It's, it's hard, so get, get that straight. It's, it's, it's a, definitely a difficult game. One of the tougher games uh, this generation, if you ask me. But I enjoyed the hell out of it, and I thought it was deserving of a spot on the list. Number nine. The Darkness. Uh, I mentioned The Darkness in my E3 video of the wishes I wanted because I would love to see a proper Darkness 3. There was one, I think, but I want a proper one. Uh, the Darkness is this cool game where you play kind of this gothic guy, you know, tre black trench coat, long hair. It kind of looks like uh, the crow, but without the makeup. And he's got these four demon kind of attached to him. And you can do all these really cool moves and stuff. It's just a really awesome game. It's kind of open world-ish, you know, there's a lot of limitations in the open world. You're constantly having to take the subway, which is one of those weird things in the game. But I enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, I think there's a lot more potential than what the game actually delivered. And I'm excited, hopefully, that in the future, maybe we can get one of these. But I did enjoy it enough to give it a spot on my list because... It's something that you need to try if you're a horror fan. It's just fun to play with those four demon arms. It's uh, They're just gruesome kills and uh, yeah, something I think you should check out. Number eight, Silent Hill, the original. Um, Silent Hill is a game I played on PlayStation, the original PlayStation, I think. It must have been, free. yeah, either PlayStation or PS2, but I think it was PlayStation. Uh, I like this game so much and the atmosphere of this game that I actually bought a new TV. Like, I was a teenager and I wasn't happy with, like, the clarity that I was getting from my TV. So I stopped the game, went to the store, bought a new TV, popped it in so I can get the full experience of the Silent Hill game. Uh, it's a freaky game. Like, you're in the fog all the time. You're in this, you know, city called, uh, well, this town rather than a city called Silent Hill. And because you don't see anything, you rely on a radio that does the sound when monsters are near. Uh, the locations are creepy. There's like uh, yeah, schools and hospitals and stuff. Actually, fun fact, the school in Silent Hill is the same school as in Kindergarten Cop. True story. Uh, if you look at the posters and the way the school is designed, it's the same school. This was actually done on purpose by the people who made Silent Hill. Uh, so yes, that is the Kindergarten Cop School in Silent Hill. Uh, anyway, lo love the game. I love the atmosphere. I love how creepy it is. Uh, it's a fun kind of third-person shooter and a absolute classic in the video game genre. So very deserving of a spot. Number seven. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. That's Castlevania 4. Uh, the Castlevania series is an absolute classic series. Uh, and there's a lot of them that I really liked. I loved the first one, not so much the second, and some of the later iterations, even some of the like kind of remake one they did on the 360 PS3 era. But my favorite one, uh, for sure, is Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which was on the SNES, and then re-released on modern consoles. In fact, if you're watching this in July 2019, when I'm putting it out, uh, it is one of the free games on the Xbox One, uh, like uh, Games with Gold. So I highly recommend that you check it out and download it because it is a very cool uh, Castlevania game. And if you ever heard of the term Metroidvania, a lot of it comes from this game because it is so cool and iconic and something that is uh, very deserving of a spot on the list. Number six. Until Dawn, uh, a PS4 game. Until Dawn is basically the closest you'll get to playing a horror film. 
Uh, it's a choose your own adventure kind of horror experience. And depending on what the choices you make throughout the game, it uh, changes the ending and who lives, who dies. It's a very cool, small, it's, it's pretty short experience that I truly, truly enjoyed. I played it through twice just to see the different endings if I chose like different things and stuff. So it's a really fun, awesome adventure. And if you're a horror fan, I would highly recommend picking this up. It is a PS4 exclusive, so you do need that console to play it. But it is such a fun experience and very spooky in the atmospheric, very well acted, super nice graphics. Uh, I can't say enough good things about this game. I almost picked um, Until Dawn Rush of Blood, which is the VR version of this game. Well, not really. It's, you're not, it's not a choose your own adventure. The VR version is an on rail shooter, but it's still one of my favorite VR games. I play VR all the time. It's very scary and I love it for that. So Until Dawn, great series. I cannot wait to see the uh, the actual sequel come out one day and uh, very, very deserving of spot on the list. Number five, Dead Space. Uh, Dead Space, there were three of them. All three of them were fantastic. And this one particular that I'm gonna talk about is Dead Space 2, which was my favorite of the series. Uh, Dead Space 2 is, well, the whole Dead, I'll just talk about the Dead Space series because it is a pretty contained trilogy. Uh, the Dead Space series takes <laughs> takes place in space. You're kind of this uh, kind of like outer world guy, you got this cool suit on and you go onto these abandoned uh, spaceships to have these crazy alien creatures. I'm not usually a big like alien guy. Uh, as much I like as far as the horror genre goes anyways but except alien and aliens but that's a whole other story uh but I think that this game was really really cool yeah, the way you had to kind of strategically shoot the creatures and manage your ammo and the atmosphere of the levels it was just like a really cool experience a really well made game and a series that I hope EA makes once again uh, right now it's kind of on the back burner. We haven't had a Dead Space in a long time. But uh, if you like space like space games and horror sp space and all that kind of stuff, like Event Horizon, uh, Aliens, that kind of stuff, I highly recommend playing this one. It is definitely an easy one that I had to put on my top 10. Number four. Doom. Um, do I really need to say anything else? Uh, Doom is one of the biggest game in the history of video games. Uh, and I'm talking about the like original Doom. I played this on my PC when I was a kid, and I played it on the re-release on SNES, and I played it again on the re-release on 360. And it's just such a fantastic game. The music, the gore, uh, the level design, the, the weapons that you get. It's just uh, everything about this game is awesome. And it, it has surprisingly aged really, really well. I just really enjoy playing this game to this day. So I don't even know what else to say. Like people, you need to play Doom. If you have, I mean, if, if you're watching this, you're probably a video game fan in some capacity and you've probably played Doom because Doom is really one of the most iconic games in the history of video games. So yeah, this one, it was an easy choice for my list. Number three, Resident Evil Four. Uh, talked about it a little bit before, Resident Evil is one of my favorite series of all time and I had to kind of struggle on which one I would pick. Uh, there was Resident Evil 2 which was high on the list, Resident Evil 5 I liked but it was more action-y. Resident Evil 1 is one that I played on the original PS, like the, the original PS1 right when it came out so it had a huge impact on me. 7 I played in VR so that was interesting. There's just a lot to love about this series but none of them I like more than Resident Evil 4. Uh, it's just, there's something about that game that really like marked me. I just really, really enjoyed the experience. You start in this kind of, uh, like in this village and these crazy people are coming after you and the way that you shoot and the way that you play and you have to protect someone and I hate protect missions, but it, they made it work really well in this game. Like they actually made it something fun to do. So, so when you had her, you kind of sometimes just stuffed her in a trunk so she kind of doesn't get out there. But sometimes they took her and you have to like get her back and you have to like snipe the guys from far so she could get away. 
Uh, it's just a really, really cool game. I like this game so much, I dressed up as one of the like evil priests from the game uh, at a Halloween party uh, because I just absolutely adore this game and this experience and one that I go back to once in a while. Every time they re-release it, I buy it because I just absolutely love this game. So Resident Evil 4 is the easy pick. Number two, The Last of Us. Uh, the Last of Us is one of my favorite games of all time. You know, and if the other one wasn't my number two favorite game of all time, it would be probably at the top of the list. And I wouldn't argue with anybody who puts it at the top of their list. The Last of Us is good in every way. It's fun to play. Uh, the atmosphere is fantastic. The acting is fantastic. The scares are great. The set pieces are great. There's just not a lot to dislike about this game. Uh, I enjoyed so much my experience and I cannot wait for Last of Us Part 2 next year. To, uh, one of, if not my most anticipated game of the ones that they have been announced so far. Uh, the Last of Us is just a fantastic game. It is a PS4 exclusive, so you do need to play it on that console. Uh, it's PS no, it was PS3 exclusive that got ported to PS4. I actually got it with my PS4. I played it on PS4, I didn't play it on PS3. So you have two choices. You can get it on either one. Of course, I'd recommend PS4 because of the graphics, but uh, anyway. Great game, fantastic story, fantastic acting. The whole thing is just uh, a must play if you're a fan of horror video games and if you're just a fan of video games. It is a little scary on the scary side at some points. It's like half human, half monster. So I really like the monster half. Human half is okay, it's a little uncharted y. Uncharted y, is that a word? It is now. Um, so the, you know, the monster side is just absolutely fantastic. And uh, so if you're a little scared of games, I don't know if I'd recommend it, but other than that, you need to play this one. Number one, Bioshock, my second favorite game of all time. This game just captured the hell out of me. Uh, it, it's a story about a guy who's playing crashes in the middle of the sea and he sees a lighthouse. He goes into the lighthouse and there's this like weird submarine thing that's inside the lighthouse. He gets into it and he goes into an underwater city called Rapture and the whole like the whole first game takes place in this play in this underwater city called Rapture uh, it's a guy Andrew Ryan who built this city to to have no rules so in Rapture there's no politics there's no religion there are no boundaries so you can do whatever science project you want without the fear of repercussions from a government or religion and because of that, they invent this thing called Adam and Eve, and it made people go absolutely crazy, and then it gets abandoned. You get there a year later, and it's just, ugh. Oh, I don't even know what to say about this game, because I love it so much. You play with different elements, because the I think it's the Eve that sh gives you all these powers that you can use, like shooting bees out of your hand, shooting electricity, fire. Uh, there's these big daddies, which are these giant machines that are always like roaming. So in the game, you know, they're like regular enemies, but there's always that like threat that a big daddy could be there and they're just kind of walking around, you know, and it's just everything about this game is great. The music, the, the visuals with the underwater effect, and, uh, it has aged a little bit as particularly like the underwater scenes, but it doesn't take away from how fantastic this game is. The sequel was great, Bioshock 2. The third one was great, Bioshock Infinite. And I am I know they're making a new one, and I'm really hoping that they announce it at some point soon because I cannot wait to see where this series go. In fact, I if I remember this, uh, I did a game of the, the video games I want to see made into a movie. This might've been my number one because there's so much to like here. The story, the action, everything. So Bioshock is, to me, my favorite horror video game. What are your favorite horror video games? I'm sure I missed one. Every time I go to edit this or I like hear about it later, there's always one I'm like, ah, oh, how did I not think of that? Uh, actually, I'd forgotten The Last of Us. So yeah, someone reminded me like two days ago. Uh, so thankfully I'm recording this later than usual because I went to Montreal Comic Con and uh, it made it on my list. But let me know which ones you think are great. Any on my list that you liked or recommend, the ones I didn't list. Um, love to talk about it. I love talking about video games. I love talking about horror. So this is really uh, down my alley here. Next week, it's gonna be another fun list. It is my top 10 favorite movies featuring pro wrestlers. 
love wrestling and I love movies that feature pro wrestlers, so I can't wait to talk about that. And while you're on the channel, check out the other videos if you feel like it. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.